welcome to Litigation Health. My name is Heather Hoida Twin, and today we're going to talk about intellectual property rights that apply to face masks. We're now over a year into the COVID pandemic. Many of us are used to the drill of getting our mask on when we go out. And some of us who are more entrepreneurial have taken to making masks ourselves and starting a small business. The other day, being the legal educator that I am, I started wondering, what are the laws that are associated with making and selling masks? So who better to ask than my colleague, Tom Curries. Tom is an intellectual property lawyer at the law firm Wilson Liu LLP. He's practiced IP law in Toronto for over 10 years. Tom is also a registered patent and trademark agent. I'll now pass the program over to Tom. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Heather. So I'm going to be covering some of the IP issues associated with making and selling um, cloth masks uh, for, during this pandemic. And uh, some of you might be wondering whether it's okay just to copy someone else's pattern you find on the internet and start selling masks. So when I'm referring to the pattern, what I'm talking about is on the piece of paper, you're going to have the outline of the different pieces that you need to cut out of the fabric to make the mask. And I'm not talking about the pattern that might be on the fabric. That's a separate issue. Uh, so I'm going to start with copyright. Um, copyright does not protect the process of making the mask. It's just the expression of the instructions. So let's just say you went online, you downloaded or printed a document that lays out a pattern and sets out steps for making the mask. And maybe you also watched a, a video on how to do it that document or that video might itself be protected by copyright. And so if you were to reproduce and sell the document or video, that might infringe copyright. Uh, but that's a separate issue from making and selling the masks uh, that are based on those instructions. And so following the instructions in making a mask doesn't infringe copyright in the document or the video that lays out the pattern and uh, sets out the instructions on how to make the mask. Uh, but what about the pattern of the actual mask? Um, now it's, it's debatable whether there's any copyright in one of these standard type cloth masks, uh, but it's possible, for example, if um, some people have made an embellishment or tweaks to the design, uh, depend on the pattern that you choose to make your mask out of. Uh, an interesting wrinkle in uh, Canadian copyright law, though, is that if a design is applied to a useful article, which arguably a mask is, uh, after 50 of those are reproduced uh, under the owner of the copyright's authority, it's not an infringement of copyright for someone to then make the 51st, 52nd, and so on. Um, just to be clear, I'm talking about the pattern of the mask rather than the, the fabric. So the flip side, though, is that that's where industrial designs do come in. So um, industrial designs, they protect the original aesthetic features of a finished article. If someone has a particularly unique mask pattern, a unique design, and they want to protect it, it's possible they apply for an industrial design. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Another thing to consider is that some people are publishing designs and are giving permission for others to make and sell them. And they're happy to let people make them and then to sell them. So if you have the permission of the owner, then you're not infringing their copyright. Sometimes though, it's silent on whether you can or you can't. And other times, um, some people explicitly say that you can't sell the masks commercially. So whether terms and conditions like that are enforceable depends on, you know, among other things, how and when that term was brought to, to your attention. Did you only find out about it after you made the purchase? It's harder to enforce those terms if, if, that, if that is the case. Obviously those can be much safer if you just buy from someone who gives you the explicit permission to sell masks from their own design. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is the fabric you choose. And with, as with um, patterns, some sellers are going to have terms and conditions that say the fabric uh, is for home use only and not for commercial sale. And the same kind of considerations apply there too. Another thing to be mindful though of is if you pick a fabric that has recognizable characters or, or logos on it, 
there could be trademark rights in those items and the owner could argue that you're infringing their trademark rights or passing off your products as authorized products of whatever their brand is. So if you're choosing between fabrics and want to play it safe, pick simple generic one and avoid ones where the seller is trying to put limitations on how you can use it. If you're thinking of branding your masks with a particular trademark, I'd encourage you to watch our other video where we talk about trademarks. Uh, and if you're interested in learning about IP law generally, we have an IP 101 video that you can also watch. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching.